Live from the ABC7 Broadcast Center, this is ABC7 News at 11 on your side. First at 11, the National Transportation Safety Board released information today about what happened moments before a jet crashed right into that neighborhood. What we now know, there was no in-flight fire, no catastrophic engine failure, and no bird strike. So what did happen? Well, the exact answer to that isn't clear at this point, but we spoke with an expert who has a few theories. Jay Corp live in Gaithersburg tonight. Jay, what did this expert say about this? Well, Leon, first I'd like to show you what's behind me, a dramatic image. Uh, that is a portion of the plane. That's the cockpit right there on a flatbed truck about to be taken away so that NTSB investigators can comb through it. They released a lot of information today. Tonight we spoke with a former NTSB employee who believes, based on what he's heard so far, that pilot error could have contributed to this awful accident. Came in in real low. Only a day after a private jet slammed into a Gaithersburg neighborhood, killing three in the plane and three in a home, including Marie Gimmel and her two young children. We are learning much more about the final seconds of that flight. NTSB officials say the cockpit voice recorder and flight data recorder are intact and providing investigators with critical information despite the state of the plane. First and foremost, there appeared to be no in-flight fire, no catastrophic engine failure and no bird strike. But officials say 20 seconds before impact, the stall warning went off in the cockpit. And it is there to, to announce an impending aerodynamic stall. They say the speed of the aircraft at this time was 88 knots, or 101 miles per hour. And at that point, there were large excursions in pitch and in roll. Aviation consultant and former NTSB employee Charlie Pereira believes the plane simply was not going fast enough. But he stresses we don't have enough information at this point to know exactly why. The information that was provided today and from the witnesses would lead one to believe that it was a pilot error uh, in the sense that he failed to maintain airspeed and stalled the airplane and did not recover uh, prior to impact. We are here to determine why was the airplane at that speed and what was the effect of the performance of the aircraft by going 88 knots. And now back live, you are looking at the jet's engines on a portion of that flatbed. Uh, Charlie Pereira, that former NTSB employee, also believes it's possible that icing could have played or contributed to this accident. We won't know. The NTSB is not ready to talk about that. We know that they are a methodical agency, and it could be months, if not a year, before we have a cause. Live in Gaithersburg, Jay Korf, ABC 7 News. Thank you, Jay. Ken Gemmel, the husband and father of three, the, the, those that were killed in the crash, released a statement tonight on his Facebook page, and he wrote, No words can describe the enormity of our loss and sadness over yesterday's tragedy. We lost Marie, the love of my life and college sweetheart and our two young, innocent, and joyful sons, a loss that no person should ever endure. The outpouring of support has been overwhelming, and my daughter and I were appreciative for the prayers and well wishes from friends, neighbors, and the community. An online fundraiser for Ken Gemmel and his daughter has raised more than $280,000 so far. Certain businesses in the Gaithersburg area are raising money as well for the Gemmels. For more information on how you can do to donate, if you'd like to, you can check out our website, WJLA.com. Allison. Leon, many people <clears throat> living near the Montgomery County Air Park there long feared that a crash would happen. Members of the Air Park Concerned Citizens Alliance say the facility and the area around it have changed dramatically in the past 25 years. The air park is surrounded by highly high, high density residential areas. Uh, and I think that's a prescription for a disaster, and unfortunately, that happened yesterday. And the group says it's made a number of recommendations over the years, including reducing the number of flight paths. The manager of the air park, though, tells ABC 7 News officials often meet with residents, but that they feel yesterday's crash had little to do with airport operations. The investigation into what happened and who is to blame is far from over here. So stay with ABC 7 and WJLA.com. We will bring you new information as soon as it's available.